Welcome, and welcome back, everybody, to the OK Grognard Show. Today is Monday, November 27th, 2023, 10 a.m. Central in beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Looks like the sound is running just fine. We're going to do a state of the 1E AD&D campaign. It's a campaign I run a couple times a month, and... Uh, I run it at Lake Geneva Games here in the birthplace of Dungeons and Dragons. That's official now, by the way. If you were at the 330 Center Street ceremony, you already know this. Vince, welcome. I see you're in the chat there. Thank you very much for dropping by. Vince, some of this conversation is going to be about you and your character because... Vince, who was a newer player to 1E, had the unfortunate circumstance of being, well, everybody was fighting an earth elemental in the tomb, which they, after several sessions, finally cleared out. They gathered up the treasure, but they also had to gather up the body of Vince's fighter, which unfortunately took two big hits from the Earth Elemental and was uh, knocked with the second one to 12 under zero. And as we know, you can go as low as 10 under and still be stabilized and revived enough to hobble back to town but if you go past 10 under boom dead and uh, Vince is now debating yes poor Jethro and uh, what do we got here this guy we had to uh we had to make some decisions. I mean, they're bringing them back to town. They're figuring out what's going on with them. But part of the problem is for for Jethro is, uh, does he want to come back? Does he want to actually be a uh, raised from the dead character and go on and play and continue to play with his character because remember Vince and a couple other players joined the group as additional players to the campaign after having played in a couple of Sunday second Sunday one shot games using pre-gen characters so this is not a character that he created personally he has some he has some ties to it, of course. He's played the character and has enjoyed playing the character, but... <clears throat> the question becomes, if he refuses the race from the dead, can he create something completely on his own that then he will even be more invested in for the campaign. So this is the big this is the big decision facing Vince and obviously uh, being something to uh, to deal with personally and as part of his as part of his uh Evolution as a first edition game player. It's a big decision. And we've done a little poll in the the OK Grognard Show Facebook group. So if you have access to that, and anybody does who's on Facebook, please go uh, put your two cents in there. Or if you're checking this out on YouTube, then by all means, leave a comment as to whether you think he should... Uh, Accept the raised dead and come back as his fighting man, or should he refuse the raised dead and create something of his own? 
it's a tough one. Give some reasons, of course. What do you think? I see, uh, I see that Sarah is in the, in the chat, and I don't know that Sarah chimed in. So, what is your opinion about what he should be doing? There we go. We barely knew him, she says. We barely knew him. The RIP is there. It's a good question. He's played in, uh, gosh, I want to say six, seven, if we count the two second Sundays game sessions that we've played. Has it been that many? It's been a while. And um, it's fair enough also to say that the group has three other fighters and a ranger. So I don't think you're forced to continue to play Jethro the fighter out of any obligation. Jethro was named by one of my once-a-year Gary Con players who picked up the mantle of this NPC and started playing him, which they'll continue to do. It's their character as well, so maybe that's a consideration. Because whatever happens to Jethro, treasures they garner in that once-a-year pre-Gary Con game, that can... Uh, that can affect what happens to Jethro's, too. There are multiple people playing the character. Maybe you'd prefer to uh, have your own. We need no more debt to the Darians. <laughs> okay. That is uh, Sarah saying that the god that most of the people worship in this uh, group, Darian the Guardian, has plenty of uh, followers and shouldn't feel obligated because of that. Sarah also playing a, a fighter, one of the original fighters in the campaign. So uh, Sarah can tell you firsthand how much in, how enjoyable it is to start a character from scratch and bring it up through the ranks on your own, or at least not uh, have anyone else's fingerprints on it. So that's something to consider, too. I should say this tomb was uh, utilized a, a, a truncated map from Dyson Logos, one that I uh, made some, some adjustments to. I always change them a bit when I use maps from a source, an outside source, rather than map myself, which, uh, boy, I'll tell you, with all the the maps that Dyson has made over the years and, of course, from the Ford Studios and other places. I have a plethora of maps that I can borrow and put to, uh, put to my own uses. So it's always great to uh, use one of those. They cleared it out. They managed to get through all of the tomb of this water it, it, it's called a tomb it was a tomb it was definitely a place where they had a, an earth elemental bound and held in uh, imprisoned uh, seemingly uh, the water elemental faction many 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 centuries ago had uh, placed guardians here entombed and shrined guardians here to guard against this earth elemental getting out and it makes you wonder why not just destroy it obviously this group could they did and they gathered some pretty powerful magic and including uh, weaponry 
from the from the various uh, sarcophagi here of the guardians that were placed here with the imprisoned earth elementals. So why was it imprisoned instead of just destroyed? There are a lot of questions, and this is stuff uh, I imagine the group will need to ask when they get back to town. Not that there are necessarily any answers to be had there. They may need to find their answers in other places and from other sources. And they have one they could explore further. They never went back and dealt with the quote-unquote tree golem that they dealt with in this other ancient underground facility that they had explored. They left that after dealing with other things and gathering up some treasure and left that uh, unfinished. So there might be something there worth finding out. Anyway, that's the state of the current uh, 1E, AD, and D campaign that I run a couple of times a month. We have one more session early in December, and then we take that winter hiatus until late in January, as we are doing with this show as well. Two more Monday editions of the OK Grognard Show for 2023, and then we're off until late January for our winter hiatus. Vince says, the Earth Elemental got my heart pumping. Your description was bone-chilling, the sound of stone banging on metal in the darkness as Jethro reluctantly walks up the stone steps and throws his torch in the room. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there was some uh, some nail-biting moments there. We need no more dead to dairy. Yeah, okay, Sarah had said that. I already read that. Sorry about that. But uh, lots to think about. I leave it all to you. And uh, feel free to make comments if you're checking this out on YouTube. And I thank you all very much. We'll shut this down for today. Catch up with you next week. Catch up with you two at our next game. Well, we have one more show before our next game, so there's that. Hey, everybody. That was the state of my 1E AD&D campaign. This has been the OK Grognard Show. Don't forget that the show streams live on Twitch each Monday at 10 a.m. Central, and then it's archived on YouTube. I want to thank our Patreon supporters, Tom Tellis of Fat Dragon Games, Carlos Leising of Castle Entertainment, Heath Farnan of the Andy P D and D20, Dave O'Brien of Four Quacks Games, and as always, Shane Bradley, DM Extraordinaire. This has been the OK Grognard Show from beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Bye-bye.